Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. And here's our palette of acrylic paints. Ultramarine blue, which I'm just going into. Burnt umber, dark one. Sap green and at the top, some cadmium red and some yellow ochre as our yellow. And of course, titanium white. Always gotta have some white on there and it's the one color I always use the most of so I'm just making myself a bit of a uh, a beginning of the sky beginning, beginning of the sky color so I'm using some gray card um, <laughs> I meant to look at what brand it is I need to look at that I think it might be Canson but I'm not 100% sure. I've been getting my card from Hobbycraft. So if you've got a Hobbycraft, it's the card that they have. <laughs> um, so I've been making myself like a, a yellowy, ochre warm grey. And now I've made myself a blue. And I'm just pulling the paint across. It's breaking a little bit, but I don't mind that because the, um, the, the card is a grey colour. And that's okay for for me for that to show through and uh, I'll show you how you can benefit from that with different colored cards in the future <laughs> because it is interesting so I'm mostly using my graduate brushes I use the same brushes for acrylics as I do for gouache and watercolor I just use these so just to warm the colour a little bit up, I put a bit of cad red in there. And working on the sky. I enjoy painting skies. <laughs> I really do. I'm constantly looking up at skies when I'm uh, well, I probably shouldn't be, but when I'm driving to work. I'm like, hmm. Interesting cloud. <laughs> if you see a really good one find a, a lay-by to pull over, take a photo of it, or take a little packet of uh, paint around with you and a little sketchbook. Do a quick sketch from your car. Why not? So I'm putting a bit of red, a bit of blue, and a, a warm grey, that is. It only just shows up on the warm-ish <laughs> grey of the card, so... Just drying my brush. Getting some more white. Some yellow. Yellow just warms that white up. I always think when I'm going to use white, I always think, what can I put in it? Because I, I never really use pure white unless you want to uh, create something that's really blown out, then it would work. So I'm looking at the uh, the reference picture I've got is actually a painting I made up when I was on the computer and I quite like it so I thought hmm what if I can do this as an acrylic painting so I'm just messing with the brush seeing how the paint pulls off every now and then I spray a little bit of water on the on the plate just to uh, stop it from drying out you do have a bit of time with these acrylics these are uh, interactive uh, Telia acrylic paints and you do get a bit of time they don't dry quite as fast as some of the others you can almost use them like gouache or, or oils to a degree <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying myself painting I don't mind what I use really and it's good to uh, experiment so I'm grabbing some yellow ochre bit of blue in there <laughs> I'm putting in where the uh, 
the hills are, but <laughs> I realised my paint just wasn't much different, so I thought, oh well, I'll just use it to uh, create another layer to really thicken up that area, make it a bit stronger white. Then I put a bit of yellow ochre in my colour, then we want to be doing the uh, bottom part of the cloud where the cloud and the, uh, the the light of the sky meet. So it's using little round strokes. Just sort of letting that paint dance around a bit. Going over some of these blue areas with a bit of light. Some of that blue shows through. I don't cover all of it up as I'm painting. <laughs> I'm constantly pulling my head back, having a look, having a drink of uh, coffee. <laughs> Spray my uh, plate. A bit of brown, burnt umber, in in with the yellow ochre. Get a really nice, a nice warm grey with yellow ochre and the brown. If it's too warm, cool it down with a bit of blue. All these different greys that you can create. You could just do paintings with different greys. <laughs> Get a nice, interesting mood doing that, wouldn't you? Just using earths, a bit like early day Van Gogh. He used to like use a lot of uh, earthly palette. Depends what mood you want. I was going for a, a bit of a magical mood in this one, really. Really experimenting a bit with the paint, using the acrylic on card and getting the feel of it. A lot of the time I think it is getting the feel of paint. As soon as you get the feel of it then you can just start being a bit more creative with it. my brush. Getting a smaller one. Getting a pinky colour. So throwing in some little pinks. <laughs> you get all, all sorts of colours in skies and uh, because this is a made up sky <laughs> you can put whatever you like in there I just wanted to change things a little bit warm areas up I'm always thinking warm and cool so uh, when I'm thinking about, oh, I want to warm this area up, I'll use a bit of warm colours. And then if I want to cool it down, use cool colours. And I just keep building things up until uh, I get to a point where I think, hmm, what can I do now? And that's the time to make another drink. Or have a have a cake, <laughs> or like we do in England, we have a scone, cream scone and a cup of tea, maybe a cucumber sandwich or two. What what? <laughs> so just washing my brush again. A clean brush is key. A clean
Clean brush is key. Don't get lazy and not clean your brush because uh, then your colours will be become a bit muddy and uh, unless you want muddy colours but I, I tend to want quite fresh colour each time see how that blue's sort of disappearing a bit now but it's still some of it's there and it shines through a lot and it gives, gives the uh, sky depth quite good using a ceramic plate I find for your palette because they're easy to wash <laughs> and it's a smooth surface some of the acrylic palettes they have all these little ridges and stuff and they annoy me <laughs> so I'm just putting in some background hills and uh, I'm going for a sort of a, a light cloud colour, really. And uh, it's still fairly pale, so because it's quite far away, taking the atmosphere and it's pale and backgroundy. It's one good way of making something look like it's far away having it similar to the sky colour, just a little bit darker and it will automatically look like it's miles away <laughs> just threw some water on my brush just to make this bit come down a bit and I keep pulling my head back <laughs> having a look I thought hmm could do some light in the sky don't want it to be too dull the sun is glowing in areas in some of these clouds Now using this circular stroke, I'm creating a bit more life in the cloud. I felt like it was missing a bit of um, that sort of fluffy cloud feeling. <laughs> that a brush stroke, a curved brush stroke, little flicks of colour creates. clouds they have like a um, a puffy type feel <laughs> like a like a really soft cushion <laughs> so I'm trying to think about that when I'm doing this it gives the uh, sky life these different brush strokes they create different effects added a bit of uh, yellow ochre and white to my brush so I can bring this together a little bit some of the lights hitting this part of the cloud and add that bit of cloud jutting out because you get these bits that come out I'm just picking out spots that I think would hit, would benefit from a bit of light hitting it. I was looking up at the sky yesterday on the way back from work and it was amazing. There was so many colours, so many different cloud shapes, uh, which really got me into doing skies like these. I've been seeing a lot of them recently and there's so much going on it's that time when every now and then you get a, a bit of a storm 
Oh, I find those um, the clouds in those periods so amazing. So if you're having a go at this painting, feel free to change the clouds to however you want them to be. Bit of burnt umber, a bit of yellow ochre. We're creating the, the mountain. So we've got the light hitting one side of this mountain, so I wanted to uh, create this shape. See how this layer has now pushed that background hills, the background hills have gone further back now. Because the other thing is when you go far away, you can take away the colour as well. It's another way of... Uh, sending it far away especially if the sky's grey then if you grey down your background hills as well and then a hint of colour as you come forward brings that area forward so I'm just looking at this mountain and starting to build it a little bit using my reference it is slightly different but one thing I'm using actual paint rather than a computer <laughs> but the uh, digital tools are so amazing that I find I'm usually surprised when I'm painting on the computer now because sometimes it does look like a real painting. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a beginner really on digital art, but I still enjoy it. It helps to do other types of art because then it improves my traditional painting. So using quite a, uh, hardly any paint on my brush and just dragging it, you get the paint breaks and you get a bit of texture. The mountain almost looks ghostly at the moment, doesn't it? It's not finished. <laughs> pinkish hue to the uh, colour. I was unsure whether I should paint the dark part of the mountain first and then paint the light afterwards. So I just thought, oh well, I'll just paint the light first and see what happens. <laughs> because of acrylics, they dry fast, don't they? And if they're uh, not drying as quick as you want, you can get a hairdryer out and, and dry them solid. And then you can paint on top of that, so it doesn't matter too much, I don't think, anyway. Whether you do the darks first or the lights first. Because you can just wait for it to dry and then go over the top of it and change it to however you want. Bit of Burnt Umber, a bit of Ultramarine Blue. You'll notice I don't use that many colours. <laughs> I, I tend to use this, this small palette of colours these days because I don't really need that many. <laughs> and when you uh, study the Masters, they didn't really use that many either. And in fact, some of them hardly used any. <laughs> Once you uh, learn how to mix your paints, you'll uh, find your palette of colours is not as big. 
You should have seen how many paints I had when I first started. <laughs> so many paints on my palette, it was confusing. It scares me now when I think about it. I'd probably have about 15 different colours on my palette. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't do it. So if you're a beginner and you haven't done very many paintings, um, I would suggest a limited palette. You'll be uh, way ahead of me when I first started. It took me a while to work that one out. <laughs> Nothing wrong with experimenting though, it's kind of exciting to buy a new colour and try and do paintings with it. Or throwing them all in a bag and just picking out a few and doing a painting or whatever you get. <laughs> it's a good, good one to do, it's good fun doing that. I should film myself doing that with acrylics. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see something like that. So at the base I've got a bit of a, a yellowy mist in amongst the mountain and I thought to myself I could wait for it to dry and then add it on but then also I could do what I do now and just mix it into the base and because uh, it's still a little bit wet it still blends. And then I automatically get a bit of a mist. And that mist is there for um, to create a bit of atmosphere. <laughs> Using the tiny brush. <laughs> Look how small that brush is. Man, it's not that tiny. I've got a really tiny brush. A, uh, a 4 zero brush. Hardly ever use it, but you never know. So I'm thinking about these half colours in between the lightest light and the darkest dark. I'm, I'm looking at those and I'm putting in marks for where they are. And this area where the mountain turns into the dark that's where I'm putting the most texture and the and the reason for that is that when the light bends around an object you get more of the texture showing because of the angle of the light I hope that makes sense have a look at pictures of the moon <laughs> And as the moon, where the light hits the side parts, you see more craters because there's more shadows being generated because of the angle of the light. Something to think about when you're painting. One of the many things to think about. <laughs> Just add it to the list. So I'm thinking about the shadow area and I want it to be cool so I'm using a blue I'm just very lightly just dragging the brush letting that paint just break create a bit of a shadow area I don't want it to be too bright I wanted that bit to stand out a little bit because it's another plane thinking about all the different bits and I got the old small brush out again <laughs> put some little blue bits here and there I didn't like that one I've got to say I didn't like that I get rid of it a bit. 
I emphasize that mark there. Just rubbing it to get rid of it a bit. But it's still there. Got a bit more warmth in my colour there. Because I thought, well, the mist is warm. Maybe I'll warm this up a tiny bit with a bit of a lavendery colour. But not too warm. <laughs> Washing my brush. Grabbing some of the really light colour now, the white, a little bit of yellow in it, a little bit of the uh, yellow ochre, there's a tiny bit of red in there. I'm just going to, uh, <laughs> then I decide, nah, that brush is too small, I'll grab a bigger brush. I'm always thinking, can I use a bigger brush? <laughs> well, for, for more than one reason. The first reason is the bigger brush is quicker. The second is I find I can use them better. I can create better shapes with a bigger brush. I'm just picking up these light areas. Just doing some little angles there. Got some nice colour in there, little bits of pink, bits of yellow, bits of blue. what I'm trying not to do <laughs> is make it a solid colour. I don't want it to be a solid block of colour. I want it to have changes in it. I mean, it's something that I work on all the way through the painting, really. <laughs> the, uh, the mountain. I still feel, when I look at the picture, I mean, I quite like what I've done. I always think I can do better, <laughs> but you are your worst critic, aren't you? Putting more of a, a yellow, more yellow ochre in the colour on that one. Getting those bits that sort of turn around again. So sort of cleaning up that edge. Taking this round a little bit. I did have a lot of fun doing this mountain, I have to say. <laughs> I found it a lot of fun. I'm going to do some more uh, mountain scenes. I enjoy painting mountains. I'm just using a bit of dark just to break this up a bit. Because I was thinking it's getting too light all in one go. There's no... No breaks. Like I said, with the acrylics, you can wait for it to dry and then come back. So no problems. 
So I started to add a bit more character into the mountain. And then coming back with the light over the top of the dark that I just put on, just leave some of it, and then uh, always sitting back having a look. I thought maybe a little bit of light just bent around there. <laughs> a quick stroke you can get that breaking of the paint <laughs> get a blob there look <laughs> these random things though they, they add a bit of interest to the painting some they add something you might not have done some dark some yellow I've got, I'm going to start putting some grass in a bit of, tiny bit of sap green not much just to uh, tint it a bit start working out where the, uh, the first hill is so we have a hill it's catching a bit of light. I'm just throwing the paint on. <laughs> oh, I'm starting to yawn a bit. <laughs> soon be my bedtime <laughs> so we're putting in some uh, bit brighter yellow a bit more yellow ochre in the mix just catching that hill and I'm trying to work out if it's bright enough or not I thought mm, maybe I can go a little bit lighter and the paint's kind of breaking which is good again I, li I like using the paint while it's a little bit dry because then it does break and look it just looks better to me get more of a painterly look if it was uh, or if it was like wet then uh, it would do a solid color and I don't really want to do that I'm sitting back having a look looking at all the different layers so we've got quite light a bit darker a bit darker and then that one we're picking up a warm a warm color a bit more red in it just to make it separate a bit better from that mountain just to show that the light is hitting this it's warming it up a bit and it separates and then as the, the hill turns around <laughs> it gets darker I'm getting some dark and blue, some brown, ultramarine blue and burnt umber make a nice black. 
You don't even need to buy any black if you have those two colours. You can just mix your blue and brown. So now what we've got is uh, got some really dark land down here. It's not picking up any light. So this is a bit of a, <laughs> originally my idea was it was a bit a bit of a fantasy scene. I was going to paint dragons on the mountain <laughs> in my original idea and then it kind of changed as it went along. I did have a uh, one where there was a dragon on the mountain and it did look quite good but I wasn't convinced <laughs> I thought mm, it'd be nice to have a couple of trees here I'm just thinking of shape when I'm doing this just the shape of the tree Thinking about all the trees I've painted. <laughs> painted quite a lot of trees. <laughs> outside, outside and about, out and about, painting and inside just making trees up as well. I think you need to do both when when you if you want to be creative making your own trees up. You need to be able to uh, paint real trees as well, and then they give you ideas when you paint real ones. And then you can make trees up. The trees, throwing some more dark in there. So the idea of the, this being dark is it's backlit so the light's not reaching the land and it's only illuminating the tree on the other side. <laughs> I could have uh, bent the light around a bit maybe when I think about it afterwards but I don't know. It's my idea. I can do whatever I like. <laughs> and when you're doing your painting, you can do whatever you like as well. So I put this bottom part of a mountain. There's another mountain here. This is the bottom part. So we'll just put that in. And it works as a uh, a way of sending that mountain further back because we've got the grass in front of it we've got another layer a dark hill in front of it we've got this in front of that this block of a mountain and it's dark I just want to warm this area up it just didn't didn't quite work for me yet. <laughs> Bit of a red and yellow. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, oh, I preferred it before. <laughs> using the finger to soften it a bit.
I'm coming back over with the light again. <laughs> it's a game, isn't it? Just bringing it together a little bit more. More colour. Had a bit of light just hitting that bit as well. <laughs> I almost wiped that off with my finger, but I quite liked it. bluey grey some of the uh, light bouncing from above hitting hitting this side of the tree it was getting a bit light that was <laughs> I think there was some light on my brush Throwing bits of blue here and there. very subtle in this area there's little bits of light and dark but it's all very subtle it's not um, quite so prominent So I've also got a person stood here, there's a woman with her hair wisping. Stood looking across, maybe, <laughs> maybe she stood waiting for her dragons. <laughs> Who knows? Now I actually thought while I was painting this, oh why didn't I use a better brush? I should have used a smaller one. <laughs> I just carried on in the end. I just think about the shape, the overall shape, and that, that's all I'm aiming for for this. Maybe she's got her hands in like a, a high up pocket, or has she got her hands on her hips? Who knows? Getting some blue on there. Yep, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> so I do really early mornings. 
so uh, when it gets to about 8 o'clock I'm almost asleep <laughs> I'm trying my hardest not to yawn my head off. <laughs> so I'm grabbing some white and uh, yellow ochre to make my light. And the light is coming from here. This is where the light is. The sun is behind these clouds and it's poking through at the bottom there and getting some light out. It's lighting up this mountain and it, the light is reaching the outside. <laughs> the outside of this tree see the tree is getting the light but then there's not any light that comes any further down so I put like a rim light around the tree and then uh, thinking that some of the light might hit some of the grass top parts of the grass really long grass I just outline that tree as well. And then I thought to myself, I'd like this woman to stick out a bit, so I put the um, use the rim light idea on her as well. She's a she's a stood a bit higher up, so the light is hitting her, hitting the front part of her. So we have a bit of a rim light. Of course, in reality, maybe this wouldn't happen, but it's all made up, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Now zooming an R in, would the light hit the outside of this? And will it create a bit of a separator? So I thought I did a bit. I kept sitting back having a look I wanted a bit of blue on the other, this part of the the hair some of the light from above is hitting her so I put some little indications of some little indications of light not much, keep it quiet subtle and dark and then I thought hmm get some of these uh, are they free birds are they free dragons <laughs> every time I put a little bird in the sky I always think to myself is that a bird or a dragon hmm not sure. <laughs> I just darken that bit. Put a few uh, indications of grass bits in there. There 
we go, we're uh, pretty much there. Decided to dull that out of light because it was taking away her um, light a little bit. <laughs> Now I thought I will all strengthen the light on her. Get a bit more white and yellow. Especially on that one side. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, it's different to uh, the ones that I've done and uh, I plan on doing other interesting uh, videos as I continue my own personal practice. I hope it helps you out and I'll see you at another one. Cheers, bye.